we have got an abs Oop, excuse me <laughs> absolutely super duper show today Shep what's happening man I like that background oh thanks man yeah I think this is going to be a great show leading into the e the coming up uh eclipse and the latest earthquakes around the world uh well, lots of strange you, weather I presume you are situated there in New York because yes. of the earthquake absolutely I had to investigate it so I felt wearing it camouflage this of course yeah, absolutely yeah. and of course we're here tonight John Cullen investigates John how are you I'm doing great I, I I'm very excited it's a special show we asked Shep to uh, join us tonight because it's the four-year anniversary of when Shep came on the show and basically broke I think the biggest story I mean, I, this may be the biggest story of the last hundred years. Well, explain to everybody what it is, though, because I think a lot of people don't even remember. Well, we're going to talk about that, right? So we've got a whole deck of slides to explain to people why I believe four years ago tonight, mm -hmm. Shep changed history. And I think that the story that he broke was bigger than the JFK assassination cover-up. It's bigger... It, it, quite frankly, it's bigger than the than the David Grush uh, expose. It's bigger than the fact that we have aliens at uh, what the hell is that base up in Ohio that we talk about all the time? Uh, yeah, Wright Force Patterson. Space. Wright Patterson. Wright Patterson. Space. Yeah, yeah. So it's like that's a big story. That's interesting. The fact that we got biologics and spaceships and whatever, according to David Grush, that's a big story. But it's not as big as we all die it's not as big as that it's like it's interesting everybody's fast it's like if there's little dudes and they know how to fly around and stuff and do that cloaking stuff that's very very cool but that's not quite as big a story as the president knows the day we all may die to me that's the biggest story in in modern history and shep came on the show four years ago and said guys the military's been mobilized and you and i are looking at shep like what the hell are you talking about and he's like no i'm telling you i'm getting and you you had these photos bro of like uh tanks on train tracks and we were like what the hell is going on here <laughs> and and it was all legit and at the time so this was april 3rd four years ago april 3rd 2020 and at the time nobody had a clue that this was happening nobody knew and so shep ends up sharing his observations with us that night and in fact you know what was happening that night i don't they remember were so, cause I had prepared a whole show. I had a whole deck of slides and stuff. And I had, you know, and I still have that. Oh deck. no, yeah, we, we had asked him on to talk about helicopters. That's what I remember. And then he right. just immediately we, started in and we were like, whoa, 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 what, what? Right, right, right. <laughs> so, so we were going to, or I thought we were gonna talk about flight radar. And the reason was at the time that Shep came on the show, April of 2020, they were recounting the ballots for the election at the football stadium where um what the hell is the team um uh what is it the Phoenix? oh at the uh arizona oh. diamondbacks or the cardinals, cardinals. yeah yeah, yeah right. the cardinal stadium in glendale um which is the place where they roll the the grass rolls in and out of the place it's one of the cool stadiums where they roll grass inside now <laughs> what? were so they flying see? like a drone <laughs> around or something oh, they had like a... right yeah so that's the thing is i came to the show because i had all this flight radar stuff of surveillance aircraft flying mm -hmm. around which is you know dirt box stuff right stingray dirt box type stuff and i was going to show that to you guys and i was all excited because i had all this footage of flight radar stuff of them surveilling whatever the hell is going on in that Glendale place, right? Yeah. During this count. You come on and like, no, 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 no. Dude, the National Guard's been called up. All right. So 
everybody has the whole cognitive dissonance reaction to it. Like, what? Because there has been no other mention of this. Military call-up. I'm like, what do you, and you had video. You you had, you had like a clip to show us. You had, I forget if it was on your phone or whatever. Uh-huh. Jason, do you, have, do you have the thumbnail? Can you show people that, um, what was that show from April 4th, 2020? It's probably on your Odyssey page. I don't yeah. know if you can show people that thumbnail, but the show is April 3rd. 2020 and shep comes on and we're going to talk about you know all this other stuff so you drop this bombshell on us and what ends up happening over the course of the next three weeks is remarkable and tonight when we go to the patron only portion of the show now shep you've got a patron channel so people who have been supporting me supporting jason if they want to come and support you and watch the patron only portion of the show subscribe star subscribe star yep subscribe star.com forward slash shep that's it shep you got shep Mm -hmm. he got it that's that's pretty (laughs) sweet that's nice all right so if you guys go to subscribe star.com forward slash shep you can support the work that he's been doing at IntelliHub. And I think I've told you before, IntelliHub was you know, a, a touchstone. You went to InfoWars and you went to IntelliHub uh, you know, back in the day, if you wanted to find out the alternate version of the story. And if you want to show some slide, yeah, well, let's see if we can find that this, thumbnail. Was from this that it? Show. Extinction level event? Which one was it? I think that was after that. That was this was like a month later after we figured it out. So it was before yeah, this, right. right there, that return of Planet <clears throat> X. Well, but no, that was after as well because the after, first one right? was something to do with helicopters. I don't remember the name. Oh right. yeah, what's in the sky? Something in the sky or something? What's in the sky? Something in the sky, and it was April third, twenty twenty. So <clears throat> Shep comes on, drops his bombshell, and it sets off a chain of events, a sequence of events that I don't know if Shep knows what happened. So I'm going to be sharing some stuff with you tonight that I don't know if you know that this was happening behind the scenes in my end. And I think a lot of it had to do with your revelation. So what we're going to look at tonight, Jason, I don't know if, uh, can you flip over to that deck that I sent you? Because we've got a bunch of videos. So when we go to the patron only portion so Jason, for people who are not yet supporting your work and are kind of saying, you know what, I need to get on board and I need to support Crowdsource the Truth because the stuff Jason's doing is just unbelievable. He's the new WikiLeaks. I mean, if, if, <laughs> if what Julian Assange was doing 10 years ago before, he, you know, before they hogtied him, that's what uh-huh. Jason is doing now at Crowdsource the Truth, right? We are breaking the biggest stories in the world. And we're showing people these alternative narratives that really require some, you know, first principles. People have to really think for themselves and go, oh, you know, this is interesting. It's a different perspective. Mm-hmm. May not be right, but it certainly is different. So let's take a look at these slides, Jason, and let me show people a little bit about um, sort of this backstory of how on this night, four years ago, I think Shepard Ambellis changed history. All right. And in, uh, words like malinformation came out of this. Okay. Information is not necessarily untrue, but it is. Mm, they you know, don't like certainly it. gets. The guys, yeah. The guys <laughs> at Fort Meade really get uncomfortable when this information gets out. So it's not that it's untrue, it's that. You know, at Fort Meade, they consider this national security, and we don't. It's kind of that simple. They consider it national security, and we consider it, no, that's what's going on, and we're paying for it. So you think you get to keep it a secret, and we don't. And that's why we're the press, and that's why the press is mentioned in the First Amendment. Right? So the three of us publish information that the founders would have considered the press, right? We don't use a printing press anymore. We use Twitter. We use YouTube. We use these methods to, to publish our thoughts and ideas. We may be wrong about certain things, but boy, oh boy, when we get something right, it, it's kind of earth shattering. And again, four years ago tonight, Shep brings this information to the table 
that just opens up a new world, the likes of which I don't think people understand. So let's take a look. So you want to introduce me as uh, the author of the uh, this upcoming book? You're the bat, damn it. <laughs> I'm a bat. Right, right. So this is the new book. Um, this will be coming out soon. Uh, the, the title of the book is I'm a bat, damn it. And uh, mm -hmm. tastes like chicken. So, well, that was that was uh, the title. The working title last week was tastes like chicken. What's it twitching out? See, for? This is whoa. Well, this this is so this is you know more about how I identify, right? And so since that's in the news a lot about how people identify and all that, so I identify as a bat, even though I might be a chicken. I'm a bat, damn it. All right, so let's go to the, so this book is coming out soon. This is going to be really exciting. But Shep, it's great to have you on the show. The first time Shep and I spoke, I was on the beach at the beach bar that I took uh. Jason to when Jason came to Thailand. So if you go to the next slide, there's a couple mm -hmm. photos of the place, but we'll get to that in a second. I'll show you guys the, the beach bar. But <clears throat> this is kind of how Shep and I met was Shep started to publish at IntelliHub some of my videos on the Las Vegas shooting. So I had these findings and nobody knew who I was. I probably had 3,000 subscribers or 2,700 subscribers. <clears throat> Shep starts publishing. It's good that he found tell some of my stuff. And yeah. it was like, oh my God. I was like, holy mackerel. I'm like, I I made the big time. I'm at IntelliHub and my stuff is, you know, wow, it's on the internet. This was huge. And my subscriber base started to grow like crazy after Shep really? published. Oh my God. Yeah, it went crazy. Boom, boom. And it wasn't just one of my videos. Shep catches on one, two, three videos, and then sends me a thing, we end up doing the Skype thing. And when we do the Skype thing, I'm at the, go to the next picture because this is this is where you and I went. So so Shep and I were talking here and you and I went to this place and this is this little coconut <laughs> bar on, on the beach in Samui. And uh, when Jason came to visit well. me, I said, there's a couple pictures. You can go show him this one, there's two, two three more. And I said to Jason, I wanna show you where I was when I spoke to Shep for the first time, because again, to me, this was a big deal. Now, Shep, I'm sure the first time you met Alex Jones, you, you know, it's kind of, it's, that was kind of a big deal, man. It's like you're on the Alex Jones show for the first time, right? And you've been on a bunch of times, but the first time it's like, you know, wow. You know, I've leveled up as Jason mm -hmm. likes to say, right? I've got to level up. Well, when we talk about the st stupid Mario brothers. Yes. So, right. So the notion here that, I'm now being promoted by IntelliHub, by, you know, one of my heroes, Shepard Ambellis, was kind of a pinch me moment. And I'm here at this little uh, beach bar coconut hut place with my laptop. And Shep and I are Skyping. And, you know, wire, I'm on the Wi Fi wireless with the headphones and sitting there on the beach. And then the two of us are talking. And that's the first time we actually connected and met. And so that was uh that would have been like november december of 2017. Mm -hmm. so that's you know coming up on seven years ago six and a half years ago so that's the first time we actually connected and spoke i was there jason got to visit this place and have a fresh coconut straight from the tree and uh shortly thereafter we were pulled over by the thai military who wanted to get any drugs or guns to <laughs> which i said well, what why what do you need <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, so we'll, t we'll tell that story with the patrons. All right, so let's hop ahead a couple more slides because, again, <clears throat> this is the you, setup. Wait a second. Yeah. Are you aware yes. that Shepard is now a cartoon character? Uh, I don't know. That is uh, awesome. See that? He's got his I flock there. Uh, One. <laughs> we might get a show on Discovery Channel. That, 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 that. Well, this is for trolling Diddy in the cartoon world, something he and I have been, that's a separate deal for Tuesday. I love it. Yeah, so there it is. There's our coconut bar in uh, Thailand and uh, one of my favorite places. That's pretty cool. So, yeah, so that's where I was when I was talking to you. And Jason remembers it pretty well, right? You remember going yeah, there, right? Yeah, very well, actually. Actually seeing it, it took me right back there. It was amazing well, how clearly I remembered it. All right, so for the YouTube audience, we have a, another pretty big surprise coming up in just three or four weeks. On uh, the show on or about April 28th, 
I'm going to be removing the disguise. I'm going to show my face for the first time, and that will be the four-year anniversary from the day that we didn't die. Mm -hmm. That was April 28th. All right, so April 28th, a whole bunch of interesting things happened. One, we woke up. That was pretty big. Yeah. We, we woke up on April 28th, 2020. That wasn't really supposed to happen. The other thing that happened on April 28th, 2020, is I spoke to Laura Ingram for the last time. Mm -hmm. That's the last time I spoke to her on Skype and talked to her. Bah, 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 bah. And she was watching the video that we're going to share tonight with the patrons. So if you're not a patron, you're going to get to see Laura Ingram was in her bed with her kid. You, that, whoa. And we're going to show never you seen this that. video. You, you have it now. You downloaded it from wow. WeTransfer on your computer. I didn't so look at you've it yet. Got it. Laura Ingram has it. And this was when she calls out to one of her sons, right? So she's got two boys and a daughter. And she calls out to one of her sons. I'm on the phone with her. And she said, uh, hey, come come here with mommy. Um, we're going to look at some asteroids with mommy's friend, John. And she's in bed with her laptop. And I'm there with my laptop. And it's morning. I, I forget if it, April 28th, 2020 was Saturday or Sunday morning. And it was pretty early in Virginia. And she's watching what we're going to show the audience tonight. And she was stunned. Now, what's interesting is my assessment of where her allegiance might lie. Many people don't know that she used to live in St. Petersburg. She adopted Russian children. She speaks fluent Russian. Wow. Mother Russia. Okay, a lot of people don't know that. All right, so we may have to do another special episode, Who is Evelyn Salt? Okay, who is Evelyn Salt? We're going to find out. All right, so it the, the, turns out there's a number of people who, there's kind of like a missing 15 years in their resume, okay. if you know what I'm saying, right? It's like, huh, where, where, where did they show up? Out of nowhere, I'm making $20 million a year. Mm -hmm. So we'll get into that in another show. All right, so Shep comes on the show, shares this with us, and basically this notion is that March 13th, this declaration of a national emergency in all 50 states is a cover-up for something much more drastic. Okay, so that's at the highest level. And I go to the map. I go to the data after the show. So after we wrap up with Shep, I go to the data. There's not 10 people dead in New York, bro. There's not 10 dead in New York. There's not 10 dead anywhere. It's like, what? There's not 50 dead in the country on March 13th, 2020. He's declaring a national emergency, and they closed the doors to Cheyenne Mountain. And remember, they had that media campaign of people passing out and dying in the street in China, videos of convulsions. Yeah, we sure. never saw any of that here, did we? No, but again, they, they, you remember the video of him coming out to the White House. We did a whole show on this where, you know, 50 people come out of the, the Oval Office into this Rose Garden. And it's like, dude, there's not 50 people dead in the country. Why are you carrying on? And by the way, time out, time out, time out. Somebody throw a red flag on the field. There's not 10 people dead in Hong Kong. Yeah. There's not 10 people dead in Shanghai. Nobody's dead in Vietnam. And there's not 10 dead in... What makes you guys think it's spreading like crazy? If you check the data, it doesn't look like it's spreading like crazy. In the data, I, there's a lot of people dead in Wuhan. They got 30-something, 3,000, 3,100, 3,300 people dead in Wuhan. Mm -hmm. There's not 10 dead in, Bank, in uh, Bangkok. There's not 10 dead in Tokyo. And I'm like, well, what's he shutting down the whole country? <gasps> oh, oh, 
They close the doors to Cheyenne Mountain and there's not 10 people dead in New York. That's not about a virus. So I start poking around. Now, at the time, there was a comet called C-19 Atlas that was in the news. And that's on the next slide in the deck, I think, is, is at, yeah. So, so there's this comet called C-19, C-2019 C Atlas. And it was kind of very similar to COVID-19, C-2019 Ooh, Atlas. Wow. Look at that. Right? Yeah. Right, kind of COVID-y, COVID-y similar. And they found this thing right before New Year's Eve, like December 28th or something, right around the same time Peter Daszak got concerned. And again, we're looking at this thing and going, okay, this, this is there, right? This isn't an illusion. This is for real. NASA, JPL, like this is actually happening. And it starts breaking up. Now, the thing is its trajectory was taking it between Mercury and the sun. So the, the, it's not coming anywhere near us. But it does start breaking up. And the strange thing is the trailer <clears throat> for the movie Greenland mm-hmm. gets posted from the right. internet. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, what the hell? Why, why? What other trailers are you also ghosting from the internet? All the other trailers? No, just or that. Just Greenland? Wasn't well, that kind of weird? So Steady tonight, Dave we'll was the operator on that movie. And we're going to take a look at that trailer that they ghosted from the internet as if it didn't exist when we go to the patron only part because effectively, Shep, the trailer from Greenland was the forecast of the worst case scenario for April 27th, 2020. And that's why April 28th, 2020, I'm taking off the mask. Wow. Hmm. Now, wait a minute. Wasn't Jeremy really cool. Renner the star in that movie, Greenland? And, was it Jeremy uh, Renner or uh, the other guy? No, it's no, the other not. guy. It's, it's the Gerard other guy. Butler. That's it. And I, that may be the same guy, Gerard Butler and Jeremy <laughs> Renner. That may be the same guy. I, I mean, that's like Matt Damon I've never, and Marky Mark. It's like, wait a minute. Which one was never been movie? on screen together, right? Yeah. They've never been on screen together. So uh, that may be another show we need to do. Is, is, are they, is that the same guy? We'll do that as another <laughs> show. All right, so we got this comet. I'm checking out the comet. The comet's breaking up. They take the video for Greenland off the internet. Like, okay, well, that's mm-hmm. not suspicious at all, right? Thou doth protesteth too much. It's a movie. Let's go to the next slide. What happens next? So after the comet, I find this thing and it's like uh, so maybe shep maybe shep's not cow. quite as off the reservation as we think he is and it's like so there's actually like a plan here and you dig into the plan and the plan sure sounds a hell of a lot like what the president said on march 13th wow and it's like ha, ha, ha. once again what i said at the beginning was are you guys kidding me that's mf shepherd ambellus Right. The number when he tells one, you something's going on, you got to yeah. check it out. No, my very check it out. favorite thing about Shepard, he's he's like, he's like, um, like an eight hundred horsepower Dodge Charger. Right. You see it on the street, and you're like, whatever. And you step on the gas, and it's like, whoa, because he'll say something. This is absolutely absurd. But then you look into it, and it's one hundred percent correct. <laughs> it's the biggest story I, again in modern history. It doesn't get bigger than this, and I'm I'm trying to help people understand my discovery process because I couldn't believe it either. And it do, it's not like Shep came on and the next day we figured it all out. That's yeah. not what happened. That's not what happened. So I find the documents, and I'm like, okay, it's like, this is kind of for real, guys. This is not a joke. Let's go to the next slide. All right, so then we start looking at, okay, well, is this just like a thing, or is this like a thing? Like, is this just like a, Wait, you John, know, yeah. We're, what? What we got to make our way over to the sponsor exclusive here. We're out of time. Oh my gosh. All right. Well, tell you what, guys, if you are not yet supporting any of the three of us, the most cost effective thing you can do is support Jason at Crowdsource the Truth because he's doing shows with everybody. But we got to support you guys. 
Well, we're going to support everybody. So first of all, we got Shepard is over at subscribestar.com forward slash Shep. Couldn't be easier. Do you let people sign up for five bucks a month? Yeah. So for five dollars a month, they can support your work. Bucks. And you are breaking some of the biggest stories again, I think, in the history of modern man, this being kind of the key. And uh, so I encourage everybody, please support Shepard. Shep put me on the map before I ever met Jason. Shep was publishing my videos. In fact, that's how I met you, because I saw Shepard on Alex Jones talking about the helicopters and probably mentioned you. And then I went and followed your YouTube channel. And then the rest is history. Yeah. You, you went to IntelliHub where Shep had the helicopter videos. Of right. Mine. That's right. That's and that what got you. That got you that's to the it. Frank Muth video. And that got you to the Frank Muth video. Do you know what I so, also realized about Shepard? Shepard told me that this woman, Cassie, was suing P. Diddy. And we did a show about that where he like blew up somebody, Kid Kodiak or somebody's car. And Kid then, Cuddy, yeah. Kid Cuddy. Yeah. And then so I was looking for that lawsuit to try to find information about the car blowing up. And then I was like, well, wait a minute. What's this? This is some other lawsuit that had just been filed like that uh-huh. day. And nobody was even talking about it. And I called Shepard. I was like, dude, do you know about this? And he's like, no. And, and it, you know, we didn't know what to make of it because for three weeks we were talking about it. And, um, you know, nobody said anything and nothing was happening in court. So Shepard yeah. is just like unlocking Always all the stuff. Way in front. Way I in knew front. it way through. Way um, I realized I, I watched this uh, like eight hour interview on remote on one of the top remote viewers in the world that worked for the military. And I realized that I use, I essentially use a remote viewing technique mixed with like a technique of um, backwards journalism, and well, we'll somehow it, it we'll some, to the page. and we'll somehow the it um, <laughs> somehow like when I was uh, I don't do this uh, as much now, but when I was in the day to day of IntelliHub, like at its height. Uh, it seemed like I could just beat anyone to anything, and it was just like amazing, you know. Oh, great, you did it here, man. Yeah, uh, it, there's no question. So again, we're going to review the history, the data, and what I believe to be the biggest story in modern history. So stay tuned, everybody. Join us over at the uh, patron-only portion of the show. We'll talk to you soon. We'll be right back. Thanks for tuning in, everybody, and huge thank you to everybody who sponsors the show.